lard versus vegetable oil in macular degeneration. Good afternoon. Today we're talking about macular degeneration. The previous video we talked about diabetic macular edema, uh, but this is macular degeneration, sometimes called age-related macular degeneration or AMD. Previous video, the macula is this central area of the retina back here. You see where that line is pointing to a kind of dimpled area. Uh, in the retina, that's the very center of the macula. The macula is just a small part of the retina, but it's a very important part of the, the retina because that's where all of our sharp central vision comes from. And anything that disturbs our vision in the macula is very serious. I'm going to start by going over some of the conventional uh, understanding of macular degeneration and conventional treatments for it and then share with you some exciting new research uh, that's being done that could give us an answer to some of the causes, not only of macular degeneration, but a lot of the health problems that we see in this generation. Uh, as Americans and as people all over the world, we're not getting healthier uh, as the years go by. Uh, there's a great increase in heart disease and in obesity and diabetes, so something's not right. And, and um, there's been a huge increase in the number of people with AMD or macular degeneration or age-related macular degeneration. And again, in all of my uh, videos, I'm not trying to scare anyone or, or I'm trying to get you to realize there are things that you can do. You don't, you're not just a victim. Uh, to your health situation. There are things you can do to improve uh, your health and uh, live So here's some of the conventional understanding of macular degeneration. These are the uh, ideas that have been around for the past 40 years or so, and then we'll get into some of the exciting new things that are known now. What is macular degeneration? Macular degeneration is a disease that affects the central vision and is most is the most common cause of vision loss among people over the age of 65. Because it usually affects only central vision, macular degener degeneration rarely causes blindness, but it, may, uh, but it can make daily activities like reading and driving more difficult. Again, I'm, I apologize for reading this. I never do this. I, I generally talk totally unscripted, but I wanted to actually read this because it is the, kind of the conventional wisdom on macular degeneration and um, and then we'll get to the new stuff after that. As a person ages, harmful changes may occur in the macula. Uh, scientists don't know what causes the changes, but aging clearly plays a role in the process, so the disease is often referred to as age-related macular degeneration or AMD. It occurs in two forms, the dry form and the wet form. Uh, dry AMD is, more, is the more common form, affecting 90% of patients. Uh, caused, caused by age and thinning of the tissue of the macula, it develops slowly and usually causes uh, only mild vision loss. That's the dry form. Now the wet form of AMD, which is more serious. Uh, wet AMD affects only 10% of patients, but accounts for 90% of all severe vision loss from AMD. It occurs when blood vessels grow behind the retina where they leak fluid and blood, disturbing the center of the vision. Uh, rapid, the rapid damage to the macula can lead to central vision loss uh, in a short period of time. Now, this is very similar to what we talked about in the previous video with diabetic, diabetic macular edema. You have these little blood vessels uh, growing into the macula and then leaking fluid and really disrupting uh, vision. So who's most likely to get AMD? AMD is most common in people over 60, uh, though a small percentage of people may develop the disease in their 40s or 50s. For those over 75 years old, uh, the risk rises to 30%. Women 
may be more likely to get AMD than men. And the other risk factors include smoking, which is still believed to be true, a family history of AMD, so genetics play a role. And uh, at this writing or with this writer, it was believed that high cholesterol could cause AMD. Um, what are the symptoms of AMD? Neither form of AMD causes any pain, but the symptoms can Im include blurry vision, difficult reading, a dark or empty area around the center of vision. An early symptom of wet AMD, remember wet AMD is the bad kind, you don't want the wet kind. Uh, early symptom, symptom of wet AMD is that straight lines appear wavy. While both types of AMD can cause a loss of central vision, uh, it will occur more rapidly in wet AMD. Uh, how is AMD detected? Uh, there are different tests that can detect it, uh, vis just a regular visual acuity eye chart where we check you for 20-20 vision. That can help uh, with determining if you're developing problems. Um, a dilated eye exam, probably the most important thing, uh, which helps eye care professionals see the retina and look for signs of AMD. Uh, an Amsler grid, this is a very simple test that you can do at home. If you have a piece of graph paper, you can do this. Put a dot in the kind of in the center of a piece of graph paper, tape it to your mirror in the morning and, and test your vision looking at that um, piece of graph paper. We hand these out in our office. Well, we have tablets of what called Amsler's grids. It just looks like graph paper with a dark, little dark dot in the center that you're supposed to stare at but we have people tape that to their bathroom mirror at home and you have to ch check each eye individually because you can develop a problem with it in one eye and not the other. And if you just look at it with both eyes, it, it looks normal. But if you compare one eye to the other, you'll see that there's more distortion. What you, you'll see on the Amsler grid is if you're developing problems in the macula like that from AMD, particularly wet AMD, when you compare one eye to the other, in one eye, those straight lines may not be straight. They may be kind of wavy or uh, they're just not straight. You know, it doesn't look like the straight grid pattern that it should be. Um, can AMD be treated? Currently, there's no treatment for dry AMD. Most people who have dry AMD are able to lead normal active lives. Now that's dry AMD, wet, wet AMD is another matter. Some cases of, of wet AMD can be treated with lasers. Uh, it can help prevent further vision loss, but it is not a cure. Uh, the risk of new blood vessels growing back after surgery is fairly high. Uh, for people who have already lost vision to AMD, low vision aids like magnifiers and things like that can be a, a big help or there are now electronic devices that magnify. You could put a book underneath what kind of looks like a computer screen and it can magnify it where you can see it better. There's all sorts of low vision devices like that that can help somebody with macular degeneration. Uh, can anything be done to protect your vision? Currently there are no proven ways to prevent AMD, but people who have dry AMD should have a comprehensive exam at least once a year, obtain an Amsler grid from their eye care professional and check regularly at home for signs of wet AMD. Um, that's what I was talking about, putting the graph paper on the mirror. Those with the AMD should have laser surgery when rec recommended. Continue to check vision at home with the Amsler grid and report changes immediately. So that is the conventional wisdom. There's new wisdom on uh, macular degeneration and we'll get into that. Okay, so one of the treatments that was not mentioned in that information that I read to you uh, is anti-VEGF treatment. Uh, we talked about that in the previous video on uh, diabetic macular edema, but that's also used to treat AMD. So I uh, wanted you to be aware of that, that those anti-VEGF injections can be done. So two books I want to recommend to you, and I'll put in the links below in the description, I'll put links to um, uh, videos from both of the people that I'm going to talk about. One is Dr. Uh, Chris Kenobi, MD. He's a, an ophthalmologist, 
and he's done extensive research into the toxicity of vegetable oil, uh, it, which should really be called seed oils. They're not made out of broccoli. They're, they're, they're seed oils, but it was a marketing technique to call them seed or call them vegetable oils rather than seed oils. They're toxic to our bodies and cause all sorts of problems. It's macular degeneration, according to Dr. Kenobi's research, and he's just amazing. He's an ophthalmologist that uh, was on staff here at Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, where I've, I've practiced in Dallas for a long time. I'm an optometrist. He was an ophthalmologist. Uh, but I really would like for you to, to look at his information. And again, I'll provide a link below to some videos that he's done, and then I would recommend his book. that uh, talks about an ancestral diet um, for, uh, for treating, macular treating and preventing uh, macular degeneration. By the way, Dr. Kenobi, I'd really like to interview you. I've seen you do several interviews. Most recently, I saw an interview you did with Dr. Eric Berg, and we're both in eye care, me as an optometrist, you as an ophthalmologist. I'd love to interview you. Let's set that up. Uh, the other one is a book called The Big Fat Surprise by Nina, uh, or Nina or Nina Teichel. And, and uh, I'll put a picture of her book up too um, and provide links to some videos that she's done. But both of these people have arrived through their, through tons of research at the same conclusion that vegetable oils are more properly called seed oils, are toxic to our bodies. Um, uh, Nina Taschel talks about that in terms of all sorts of health problems. Dr. Uh, Chris Kenobi, being a, um, an ophthalmologist, focuses on macular degeneration, which is the subject of our talk here today. But I think it's uh, really exciting to look at some of that understanding. And you notice uh, all along I've always said you know, when I mention that I eat butter, I say not margarine. You know, it's because margarine is oils or seed oils that are just toxic to your body. And so maybe when you look at some of this information I've looked at, you'll understand why I'm so against these uh, toxic oils. You know, um, back in the 70s, there was a margarine commercial uh, that showed a woman with flowers in her hair and, and, um, she would taste this margarine and say, oh, my sweet creamy butter, and then some animal would pop up and say, I mean, that's not uh, butter, that's uh, chiffon, I think it was chiffon margarine, and she would say, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature, and lightning bolts would go off and everything, and she was saying that in order to promote um, that product, to promote margarine, but I would say it's not nice to fool Mother Nature by substituting uh, corn oil for uh, natural fats like lard and tallow and, uh, and real butter. Those are actually much more healthy for you, for your heart, for, uh, for your eyes, for macular degeneration, everything. You really need to research this out. And so I'll leave you with that and, and, and say... Live healthy, finish strong.